Okay, um, so this is uh, the IPFS operator. <laughs> uh, the IPFS operator is a Kubernetes operator uh, that allows you to quickly and easily uh, start up IPFS cluster. Uh, we may, I don't know, uh, there's probably times, there's probably a, a, Kubernetes, a lot of Kubernetes operator, Kubernetes people out there who uh, would like to use web th more web three stack and we, uh, up to this point, don't support it very well. Uh, so hopefully this is a step toward uh, increasing that support. Uh, I want to start off uh, by just showing you how it's used. There we go. Uh, I just want to show you how to create uh, create a cluster. I'm going to go back to this, but I'll show you, I'll, uh, I want to have a really good, uh, you know, I'll circle back to this and you'll, you'll see what happened. But. Uh, this is the cluster creation process, kubectl apply dash f, uh, and we just apply, give it a file. And boom, has creating an IPFS cluster ever been easier than this? It's uh, basically, uh, you're done. Actually, the operator is still working in the background, but um, I want to I wanna show you what's going on inside here. This is it. Basically, we, we took out all the critical components, uh, the critical decisions that you might want to make, uh, namely the storage and how many replicas you want to have. In this case, uh, we're just, you know, each node is only going to have 50 gigs, pretty small. Um, and uh, we're going to set up 100 replicas. So uh, we'll check back on this later. And uh, I just want to get that started for now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> This, this is the page that basically shows that. Uh, and it, looking at the, the collab cluster is indeed a breeze. Um, so what, what this is doing, um, we are uh, going to, we're going to create a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of pods. Uh, they're going to, uh, uh, oh yeah, collab, collab clusters. Um, are you guys, from, if you guys are familiar with, there's a, a IPFS cluster has a feature called collabs lab.cluster, IPFS cluster.io. Uh, these are, this is a feature of IPFS cluster that allows you to follow uh, the pins that are going on in another cluster. Uh, setting up collab clusters is also very easy. Um, we can create uh, an IPFS cluster simply by uh, specifying what, who you want to follow. Uh, this will just, it's the same process as creating a regular cluster, just as you, just as you saw, but in addition to allowing you to use it for your own purposes, it will also pin, uh, you know, important content from around the world, uh, that we're this, in this example, we'd be pinning the file coin, uh, proof params. We'd be pinning, uh, the IPFS websites, the Gutenberg, uh, content Pac-Man, uh, packages, uh, quick, quick, easy. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, scaling a cluster, uh, get IPFS. These are, I have two clusters now, uh, one that I created earlier and one that I created just a couple minutes ago. Uh, let's see, how do we uh, scale a cluster? Uh, so all Kubernetes objects are typically displayed in YAML. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, this looks kind of similar to the one to the setup that we just saw. Um, I want to change my, let's say replicas. Uh, I don't want four nodes. That's too small. Uh, let's, let's go, uh, let's go six and just save that done. No provisioning hardware, no, uh, messing around with, uh, cloud providers, no, uh, cabling, no uh, configuration, just edit the config file, finished. Um, just to prove that this works, get, get pods. There we go. Uh, we've got our uh, cluster with 100 nodes still being built. Uh, and now we have our six nodes. Uh, looks like the last one's just finishing up right now, but uh, the, you know, we're, we're up to six nodes for that collab cluster already. Nice, quick. Uh, yeah, okay. So now let's back up a little bit. <laughs> what is an IPFS operator? Uh, I wanted to start off with that so that we can give a little bit of time for the, the 100 node cluster to build while we go on with the rest. Um, what is an IPFS operator? Uh, or, excuse me, a Kubernetes operator. 
Uh, Kubernetes uh, allows you to extend the API by adding custom resources. Uh, and basically, when you, whenever you do this, you have an operator. Uh, in this case, we have this uh, object called an, I, called an IPFS uh, cluster. Yeah, we have this object. This is kind IPFS. That's, a, that's called a CRD. Uh, custom resource definition. Uh, you pass it parameters, and you can have some custom road uh, code running uh, that will uh, act on those parameters and create things. Uh, I put some examples here. Uh, these are some great uh, Kubernetes operators that exist. The, the uh, Postgres operator, if you change the size of it, it knows how to handle, uh, you know, wall backups. <laughs> uh, you don't need to be a DBA to run Postgres if you use the operator. Uh, Prometheus, same way. Uh, if you deal with Prometheus monitoring. Uh, you can edit uh, Prometheus targets on the fly without like going in and editing any of the config files. Uh, and of course, this one, this one that we're uh, discussing right now, um, it all the minutia to do to do with uh, setting up an IPFS cluster. Uh, you just you probably noticed that I didn't do any of it, right? Um, a little bit more uh, deeper into the weeds, uh, what uh, how this actually works uh, is basically it's an IPFS node. Uh, with IPFS cluster installed next to it. This is the standard IPFS cluster that you uh, know and love. Uh, additionally, the follow the way the follower ship works, uh, there's one additional pod for every cluster that you're following. Uh, so if you're following, you know, 10 uh, different clusters, you know, uh, good work. Uh, there'll be 10, uh, you know, additional pods that, that are all here. Uh, basically, they're connecting to, to this IPFS node and uh, making requests to the IPFS to store content. Uh, the way this looks at, at a whole cluster, and this is actually the reason why an op op uh, operator is necessary, uh, is that to set up the entire cluster, it is, whoa, <laughs> it's very complicated. Uh, but uh, you can see here we have uh, a number of IPFS nodes. Uh, you know, they're sitting here behind a load balancer that enables you to interact with the nodes. Uh, internally, these IPFS clusters are doing a lot of complicated stuff. They all have peer IDs. They have a consensus protocol, which might be Raft or CRDT. Uh, they're talking to each other, uh, doing membership joins and all this. Uh, your application, that's this yellow box sitting over here. Uh, this is the experience that you want. You want to be able to just say, I want you to add this file something happens uh and then uh over here on the left that's you uh i can just say i want to read this file uh over ipfs and it should just work like magic um yeah so <laughs> uh i want to show an example of this uh let's do that uh okay uh i have my handy dandy notes right here so let me just copy that uh, hello from Kate's. Let's go ahead and use IPFS cluster add to add that to the cluster. Uh, not with a capital letter, but uh, lowercase. There we go. Uh, so this adds it to the cluster. Uh, this is indeed adding it to the cluster uh, that is running uh, in, I, in Kubernetes. I set up a port forward. Um, but what you can see is that we get a ID back, and we can fetch this over uh, IPFS or even through the gateway. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's it's visible over IPFS. Uh, and indeed, you can do this with any of them. Uh, echo, random, uh, let's put this uh, IPFS cluster. Add more files, we get a different CID. Um, Let's uh, let's see what we got. IPFS, uh, DHT, uh, find provs. Let's find this file that we just created. Uh, this is this is going to be uh, demo uh, hell. Uh, let me let me let me use the other one just uh, so just in case there's a problem. But okay. <laughs> Uh, so the, the file that we added a little bit earlier, uh, we've got to give it some time to propagate, but uh, the file that we added a little bit earlier, these are uh, IPFS nodes that are running in our cluster. Um, and indeed, if we uh, if we were to ex exec into one of these, uh, there we go, IPFS ID, what's my ID? 
Uh, this is this uh, F3. It looks like that's this that's this one right here. Uh, so we are indeed storing these files on the cluster that we created uh, and fetching them. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, this is the 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 observation that I want to that I want to really like hit home here is that uh, you can add files and retrieve it off of IPFS. Uh, doing that is easy. All the complicated parts, generating the, the peer IDs, generating the uh, cluster secret. Uh, I bet you didn't even know that you had to do that just from looking at this. Um, yeah, wow, complicated. <laughs> uh, and, and yes, uh, this is the overall point uh, for uh, putting this out here. We want to uh, use things like this, use operators to lower the barrier to entry. Um, there are probably people out here who uh, use Kubernetes in their day to day life for their business, and they, you know, maybe read about Web3 stack and they want to try it. And then they're like, oh, this isn't for me. But uh, if there is an operator out there that is easy to pick up, uh, maybe they're maybe that, uh, you know, puts them in a position where they're actually able to try it. Um, yeah. Uh, Compatibility layer level. Uh, this is a this is a uh, uh, sort of a, a matrix to show like where uh, different types of operators are. Uh, I would honestly say we're still we're still in the very developing phase of this, so uh, we're probably somewhere between level one and level two. Um, we can do the basic install, and we can handle some uh, some like light changes like you can see that i can uh increase the scale of it and i can uh do some on the some on the fly changes uh as some of these you know deep insights and stuff like that uh are to be uh or to come later i guess uh st still working on it still work in progress uh yeah i'd put us right around level one level two something like that um and uh to top this off uh, where can you find it? Uh, this is being developed in uh, with in conjunction with uh, Red Hat Emerging Technologies. So uh, its current home is right there, uh, Red Hat ET IPFS operator. Uh, once we get this into more uh, of a production state, uh, it will be on Operator Hub. Uh, Red Hat is uh, planning on uh, making sure that this is available on uh, uh, OpenShift. Uh, and of course, uh, we will include it in, uh, you know, and make it as uh, widely available as possible as it grows in maturity. Uh, and I think that is it for me. Uh, hopefully, oh, one, one sec. <laughs> I nearly forgot. Uh, I wanted to see, uh, yeah, how many how many nodes that we could create. Uh, I'm trying. I'm going for a hundred. Uh, looks like we created. Uh, looks like 41 is the highest ones. I did do a little bit of time, uh, you know, some timing on this before. Uh, it takes right around. I wouldn't say like uh, 20, 25 minutes to create a full 100 node IPFS cluster. Uh, but dare I say that is much faster than uh, creating it manually. So. Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, I think that's it for me. Thank you.